The second one is precession of its axis of rotation about the direction of the external magnetic field, which is the vertical gravitational field. Okay. Today's topic is Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Imaging or MRI. This topic comes under nuclear medicine as well as under nuclear physics for A-level students. Kindly subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get notification about my latest videos. Images with most scanners are generated or produced by pushing buttons and executing suggested imaging protocols without knowledge of the basic principles. However, to have a good understanding of the underlying basic principles might be very useful to improve the signal to noise ratio of an image or for the interpretation of potential artifacts. Today under nuclear magnetic resonance imaging you will learn the basic principles behind the use of nuclear magnetic resonance imaging to obtain diagnostic information about internal structures. Thorough understanding of these basic principles form the basis for further understanding of this complex subject. Under this section, you will also study the function of non-uniform magnetic field superimposed on the large constant magnetic field in diagnosis using nuclear magnetic resonance imaging. Table of contents, introduction to MRI, why hydrogen atoms or protons are used in MRI, principles of nuclear magnetic resonance and larval frequency, calculation of precession frequency for an MRI scanner, nuclear magnetic resonance, relaxation times, main components of an MRI scanner, procedure and working, advantages and disadvantages, related questions and their solutions. Today we will focus on the first three points. Moreover, I would like to say that instead of nuclear magnetic resonance imaging NMRI, N is dropped to get patient's mind, get rid of the thoughts associated with bombs and power stations. MRI does not involve any kind of radioactive decay, fission or fusion reactions. MRI is a diagnostic technique used in medicine that provides fixed as well as moving images of the inside of a patient. MRI relies on the fact that in an external magnetic field some atomic nuclei behave like tiny magnets. Unlike X-rays, in MRI patients do not expose to ionizing radiations. And similar to CT scanning, in MRI scanning, electromagnetic radiation is used. We use radio frequency electromagnetic waves. These electromagnetic waves are sent to patient's body that lies on a bed and is surrounded by a strong magnetic field. A picture of the patient's insides are built up by computer by detection of the emerged electromagnetic radio frequency waves. Now, information given by MRI is different from that we obtain by the other non-invasive techniques such as ultrasound or x-rays. The human body is composed of 70% water. That means hydrogen is in abundance in human body. In MRI, magnetic properties of a hydrogen atom and isotope of hydrogen called protium are used to produce images. Protium has mass and atomic number one. That is, it has a single proton and no neutron. It's a spinning chart particle. So when there is no external magnetic field, hydrogen nuclei spin at random orientations. Therefore, their magnetic moments are randomly oriented. Whereas under the application of a very strong external magnetic field, the protons align themselves to show the direction of the magnetic field. Moreover, just like the axis of a spinning top, protons magnetic axis rotates around the direction of the external field. This rotation is known as precession. We will talk more about this in our next slides in this lecture. As I have already explained to you why we use hydrogen atom to produce images in MRI because hydrogen is in abundance in human body. So its magnetic properties are used to produce images. I have also told you earlier that when there is no external magnetic field, there spin or orientation is out of phase. So what will happen? Their magnetic moments will be randomly oriented. See, this is how we use radio frequency waves. What happens when these radio frequency waves are sent to patient's body? 
that lies on a bed and is surrounded by a strong magnetic field, what will happen? A picture of the patient's insides are built up by computer by detection of the emerged electromagnetic waves. We will study the detail in the next lessons. As I have already explained to you that the basis of MRI is the moment associated with charged particle in motion. Many of the free hydrogen nuclei align themselves with the direction of the magnetic field when a human body is placed in a large magnetic field. So under the application of external magnetic field, all these hydrogen nuclei align themselves in one direction. Now what happens? Behavior of these nuclei that precess about the magnetic field direction like gyroscopes is termed as larval precession and the angular frequency of precession is called the larval frequency. This one. Now it is very important here to understand two kinds of motions. One is the rotation of hydrogen about its axis and the second one is precession of its axis of rotation about the direction of the external magnetic field which is the vertical gravitational field. Okay.